Welcome back to a new episode here in Suavi. So, a couple of days ago, somebody requested that we do uh, an image animation and sent us a link to a video that had these animations, also, right? before we start, don't forget to check our Logo Week announcement video and to submit your logo if you want us to animate it. And also, don't forget to check our transitions um, pre-launch landing page or whatever so you can sign up if you want to be notified when we drop that out for everybody so so i said yeah sure we can replicate that using davinci it's actually not that complicated um as you can see here it's basically a still image but it is masked out in a way that it can be animated and adding that sort of like a parallax or a, it's called 2.5d effect i think and yeah it's a pretty cool looking effect and it's not that complicated you just need to use an image manipulation software such as like photoshop if you have it or or gimp or pretty much anything i'm not sure if you can layer up things in paint but if you could you probably could use paint too so basically you have your main picture and you use your image manipulation program or software to mask out a certain portion of the image and then you separate them and you save all of them as separate images as in PNG files. So they are like have an invisible background, as you can see here, basically. That's all that we do. And then after that, you compos composite them using DaVinci and then you're able to animate them using the different features and capabilities that DaVinci has. So for this thing, the first thing that I did was basically I cropped out the main subject, which is this dude here. And after that, I had it on a different layer. And then I was able to fix the background by just painting over it or smudging it a little bit. And then I added a blur effect onto the background to sell that effect a little bit better. And then after that, I, on that same image of the subject alone, which was had an invisible background already, I just cut certain portions of it. As you can see, they're pretty raw cuts. cuts. And yeah, that's, so that's pretty much it. And then after that, you just export them all. And that's it. Then you bring them to DaVinci Resolve. And on DaVinci Resolve, what you need to do, it's not that hard. Um, as you can see here, it's basically just merge nodes and a couple of transform nodes and also a grid warp, which allows you to like fix certain things when an object is moving, like when the mask is moving, right? Um, and then you just add a couple of different things with the 3D capabilities of DaVinci. Resolve 16 here or 16.2 if you update it to the last version. So let me just go ahead and I'm gonna actually create a new one using the same files that we already have. And I'm gonna make it really quick. I'm not gonna animate everything like I did in this one because that took me a while because I don't know, I just figure out details and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our fusion composition and let me close that keyframe stuff. And we're gonna add a new background and we're gonna make it invisible. And the reason for that is that if we import our media in as the first, as the main background, it's gonna change the format of our timeline or our fusion composition. And we don't really want that, right? Okay, so then after that, you're gonna create as um, a couple of, mer of merge nodes, as many as your image has depending on how many pieces your image has you're gonna create as many of those and on this one we're actually the background is not part of this first part so we're gonna add our body and sometimes we want our body to be in certain position like here in this one it's in the second one because we want our arm to be behind our body so and then you can rename them to organize them also and then there's the head And lastly, there's our skateboard, right? Skate, let's just put it like that, right? And in this case, our thing was all a little bit messed up already because the image format 
it's actually different than our, than our timeline. So the resolution. So it's not a 1920 by 1080, but it's a sort of like a vertical image. So we need to do, we need to use, a, we can use a transform node to make these smaller so that it fits on our screen. Let me just move this and put it right in the center. So then we can play around with this so we can see everything. All right, so we're gonna add a transform node. We're gonna, we can, well, yeah, let's just add a new transform node to each of these. Real quick. And then what we're gonna animate in this one again, weird, let's just animate the arm again. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go here on our main guide. I guess you could say guide tool, I guess, I guess. And then we're gonna press tap three times. So we are selecting, so we have the pivot point selected. And we're gonna go and put it right where we want our arm to like start moving. Like you can see here is not like completely perfect. So we're gonna have to adjust our arm a little bit there. And we're gonna adjust our pivot point um, right here. I think it's good. And we're gonna create a keyframe for these. Uh, for the rotation, you can also do aspect but don't worry too much about it. And also for the transform, because we might have to adjust our positioning um, a little bit later, right? So we want the ending to be here. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and then we're gonna edit up at the actual like keyframes right here. And that looks a little bit weird because nobody's arm actually just separates from the body like that. So one way we can do this is we're gonna move these not all the way to the back because that looks really weird here and move, play around with the positioning so that it moves like that and it looks a little bit more realistic I guess you could say right because it's not like cutting off from its body right if you're not able to like completely have it in the right place you can adjust uh, you can add a grid warp, a grid warp effect, and change uh, the magnet type to select it and add more grids to it. So, for example, if your body right here needs to be adjusted, like if there's a point separating it, you can play around with this and then make the actual body or image i mean move a little bit so it actually fits within your character and you can also animate these by creating a keyframe right here using animate and then go to the end and then you can put it right back to normal or whatever but for this one since the actual movement was pretty fine i guess you could say we're just gonna get rid of that and not use it for now for the example and what else? We can also animate the, let's just animate the head right away also real quick so we don't have to, just to add a little bit more. Um, so we're gonna, for the head, we're gonna create an also, another keyframe at the beginning and at the end. And we also have to change the pivot point, right? That's what you have to make sure of changing the pivot point of all the different pieces of your image. And we're gonna put it right here, I think it's fine. And you can see already how the head is a little bit moved. So we might want to attach it back to the body. Let's see where it was. Right here, it's fine. And then we're gonna go back to where we wanted to end and create the keyframes. And then we can start here again and let's move it a little bit. We can add a bunch of more keyframes if we want. This looks like sort of those old 90s animations where they would add a head of like an actual person onto a cartoon and they would move like that. Uh, but anyways, okay, so once we have our animation and all that ready, we want to play around with the 3D aspect. 
of our of the animation right so for these we're gonna go here to the transform and we're gonna connect it to an image plane we're gonna get rid of these and on this image plane we're gonna add a, mer a 3d merge and a render and connect the render to the media out and it's it looks really far away right now because we still need to play around with a bunch of stuff so on this media out which is the background we're gonna add a new image plane and then connect it and then this image plane, we're going to make it a little bit, go a little bit far. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger too. In the other one, I, the, I actually animated the scale of our, of our background just to play around and add more movement to it. So where do we want our skateboard to be? We want it to be maybe like right here. And the next thing is the camera, which is a key point in making it look good. Because if you start with your camera, um, if, if your image is like this, which is vertical, you want your camera to sort of like cover an exact part. You don't want these backgrounds to be left like that. So, right. So we're going to go here to the end of our keyframes. Um, and we're going to position our camera where we want it to be. And that's going to be here. And then we're going to adjust these things. And we're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to bring it. And we're going to start a little bit lower because of the movement. You can see here the movement of the camera. We want to, we don't want the, our skateboarder guy to appear from the camera. We want the camera to move sort of like from below him or something showing like appearing like that, right? So it's not as intrusive, intrusive. All right, so the next thing would be to animate our background again to make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go here before our edges stop uh, showing up and we're gonna go to our image plane I'm going to create a keyframe for the scale and also for the position. For the positions, we can actually create a key for the keyframes a little bit earlier. So the background is also moving along. And then we're going to go to where the last keyframe of the camera was right here. And we're going to make our background fill everything. And also adjust the Y the vertical position so it moves a little bit and our guy is not fully inside the picture yet so we want might want to move our camera a little bit further or move it a little bit higher like that and then once you render this that is basically it you can go to the spline and select everything and and smooth it out. The more little tweaks you have, the more things you're gonna have here. And then you can also play around with the keyframes. You can add motion blurs if you want, uh, but that's gonna actually be a little bit more heavier also on your system. If you don't have a super powerful graphics card, it's it might take a tool on your computer, right? Uh, what you might not want to do is try to mask things out right here in DaVinci Resolve because that will definitely take a lot of time and it will just take a lot of power from your system. It will just be really hard to make unless you have a super powerful machine. So yeah, so that's basically it. You need an invisible background. You add all the different merge nodes depending on the quantity of images that you have. And then you add it onto image planes. And since the background of these images are invisible, the image plane background is gonna be invisible too. So that sells the effect even better right um okay so let's just go ahead and add the fusion composition to our timeline and see how that looks and in the meantime let's just review that other one again these ones have a lot more movement this one for example had i added um dissolve i think it was or a distortion effect also to add that fog to add the fog effect so it has a little bit more movement because of the background of the image was actually just plain. So just to 
have it a cool little effect you can also add particles and be as creative as you want and then this is the other one that had and it has a lot of more movement it, the skateboard is moving inwards head movement and the arm is also moving right and the camera so yeah that is pretty much it and yeah if you enjoyed this video i give it a like leave us a comment so anyways um i hope you enjoyed this video and that you find it useful and i hope to see you in the next video here in swabi